Hello, Hill Elementary families. This is Katie Bradley, uh, your principal here. Um, I am uh, sending this out uh, to everybody. Uh, this is our annual uh, parent meeting uh, as a Title I school. We normally would be doing this uh, at our open house in September, but due to the pandemic, uh, we decided we wanted to limit uh, the number of adults altogether in one building uh, for safety reasons. And so this is why we'll be doing a video uh, in PowerPoint for you. Um, so I apologize for that, but um, as a Title I school, so we are designated as a Title I school, um, and therefore it is uh, required of us to have a meeting to inform you as the parents and families uh, in terms of how we use our funds and kind of how we qualify and, and uh, just more information about us as a school. Um, so first, just want to talk about our program in general. So um, we currently, uh, this program is based on the percentage of, of economically disadvantaged students we have currently at Hillendale. Uh, we are around 65% uh, of students that qualify for free and reduced lunch. Um, so uh, how we kind of, uh, the amount of funds that we get is based on uh, that percentage. And so um, I know that this year uh, our breakfast and lunch program is free, which is awesome uh, and amazing. Um, and so I know a lot of parents and families uh, feel that they don't need to fill out the free and reduced lunch forms because they're already getting uh, that breakfast and lunch. But we would ask, uh, please, that really all our families would fill that out. Um, and uh, because that is still how we uh, receive those funds. So if a lot of our families and students don't fill those forms out, then we get less funds um, because of that. So um, at your parent meetings, uh, we're going to ask you to, uh, if you haven't filled one out already, to go ahead and fill that out. So um, you can do that um, online. If you go to Henderson County uh, website, you can find that um, in the parent section, or we also have uh, forms for you to do that with. Um, so the funds uh, that we receive are used to impact our whole school. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, how we use those funds. Uh, we hire tutors and uh, these tutors come in. Uh, they are sort of a lot of them are certified teachers uh, come in and work in small groups with our students. Um, especially now that we've been through um, COVID and, and some school closings and things like that. So we're really trying to use a lot of those funds to hire tutors to come in and work uh, either individually or smart groups with students to really get more targeted instruction. Um, we buy a lot of classroom materials. Um, we also uh, do professional development with our staff. Uh, right now we are have purchased an iReady um, math program and our staff has been uh, able to um, receive some professional development on that. Um, we also pay for teachers and teachers assistance. Um, currently we are able to offer um, an art program, a full-time art program uh, due to these funds. And so that is uh, such a blessing I feel like for our students um, to be able to have those experiences, both not just with music, PE um, and library, but also to have uh, that art component as well. Um, and then technology, we have been able to also purchase um, several uh, software programs and technology uh, to better assist our students. Um, in terms of curriculum accountability, so in terms of the curriculum that we teach, so we teach the North Carolina Standard Course of Study um, as required by our state. Uh, if you would like to see that standard course of study and know what uh, what our students are learning and the things that they are being asked to do. Uh, you can find that information on the NCDPI website. Uh, if you just go to um, the, that website and just search for curriculum or standard course of study, you'll be able to see everything uh, that we are working on uh, within our classrooms. Um, in addition, uh, for accountability measures, so not only are we required to teach that standard course of study, but then we are also assessed on the learning of our students. And so uh, we are required, all kindergarten through third grade, uh, we do what's called an M-class reading assessment. And in your parent meetings, uh, our teachers will be going over uh, the beginning of the year M-class in information with you, so where your child is in terms of their reading. Uh, and specifically on five different areas on the foundational skills of reading. Uh, so if you have a kindergartner for thir through third grader, um, you will be getting that information um, 
on on that assessment. Um, we also have benchmarks. There, there are called our NC check-ins for third through fifth grade in both reading, math, and science. Um, and then we have third through fifth grade end of grade testing. And so again, those students in third and fourth grade are reading and math, and then our fifth grade is reading, math, and science. Um, and so those are our state assessments that are given uh, for accountability reasons. Um, and then our kindergarten does an NC early learning inventory where they are assessed on seven different items um, ranging from academics to um, developmental skills. Um, local, so in terms of other diagnostics, in terms of other assessments that we use, uh, we have an iReady math, which what that assessment does is kind of tell us where our students are performing in math. Um, again, that will be part of the discussion in our parent conferences. You'll get information about your student in math. And we also do a reading one as well, K-5, so that all of our uh, students have, we, we've got some information about where they are in reading. And, um, and so again, our teachers will be explaining that information to you. Um, North Carolina also uh, yearly has report cards uh, that come out that, that where they are, every school is designated a certain grade. That grade is based on both uh, proficiency on state assessments that I just discussed and also on growth of our students. Um, and so uh, in the previous year grades, so in, in 2020, there were no assessments given. Um, so we do not have that information. But in the last uh, previous year, 2019, 17, 18, and 19, um, these were our school grades. And that is, again, based on uh, proficiency on state exams. Um, in terms of growth, so growth is different proficiency. Proficiency is uh, the number of students that have, percentage of students that have achieved a level three or higher on their state exams. Um, and growth is more about where the student is and how much they have grown uh, within that year. And so in 2019, Hillendale uh, exceeded that growth. So that means that we grew kids further uh, than they were expected to grow um, in 2019. 2018, they did not meet that exceeded that growth. But in 2017, they, they students were met the growth that they were expected to meet. Um, so, uh, and, we, and that is based on what I already explained on those state exams, growth on those state exams. Um, any inf more information you want to find out about, you can always Google uh, North Carolina School Report Card, uh, and you can look at all uh, our data and also our subgroups, so how we do um, in, our, in our different subgroups, students with disabilities, uh, students, English language learners. Uh, you can find all that information out on that website. Um, so in terms of engaging our students, uh, so this year, uh, you know, being new this year, it's been awesome to watch our teachers and the work that they do in the classroom. Um, and one of the, the foundational things that has started before I have come here um, is just leadership with our students. So we are, uh, use a program called Leader and Me. Um, and this program focuses on the seven habits of highly effective uh, students, uh, adults, parents, it's great information. Um, and so we uh, work, uh, in the morning's time during uh, that first block of time on those seven habits and what it means to be a leader and, and kind of the, the habits that we want and hope that our kids uh, and ourselves would uh, develop and demonstrate. Um, this year, we've got a focus on leadership notebooks, um, and that's where we're going to be working with our students to uh, track their progress both academically and personally and, and, and things they want to do. And so that's going to be kind of a focus for this year. In term, terms of our academics, um, our teachers are really working on differentiated lessons and differentiated means that, that we are meeting kids where they are um, and creating lessons that, that are tailored to where they are individually. Um, we use Letterland, uh, which is a phonics program to build those phonics skills uh, kindergarten through second grade. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, our kindergarten has a smiles program, which we use. Um, that is where we have four adults in the classroom and we have small groups going on during our reading block. That is direct practice um, and uh, instruction in those phonics and foundational skills. Um, we also have small group instruction across our campus. 
um, at all grade levels in both our reading and math blocks uh, to ensure kids, again, are getting small group individual work on those skills. Um, we have just recently purchased an iReady math curriculum, uh, which is great because what it's done is it gives us uh, research-based lessons that align from kindergarten to, to fifth grade. Um, and if you have any interest in looking at or looking through any of that curriculum, it's great. Uh, it's a great program that has uh, has our kids working uh, together and collaboratively through math uh, to learn those skills. Um, we also have an intervention and enrichment block built within our schedule every day. And this is time for kids that need some intervention or kids that need enrichment. Uh, get both of those things for us to really focus in on certain skills and academics. Um, we want to start, we're going to be starting a new program um, here and starting the next nine weeks called Reading Buddies, where we're going to try to pair uh, our older students with some of our younger students and have daily uh, practice in reading, 20-minute uh, blocks, either before school, while kids are waiting uh, to go to class or in their gym at their second load, uh, for them to just continue to get that uh, explicit practice in reading. Um, so uh, we really need your help. Um, as a school, uh, we see your child, you know, eight to three every day, but then you have them uh, at home. And so it is so important for us uh, to really partner with you um, and your child to improve and make sure they are learning. Uh, so the first thing is just read with your child every day. I cannot tell you how important it is um, to for your child to have that practice. Um, just that reading out loud to you every day um, is really, really important to their development uh, and, and building those foundational skills that they're going to need to be successful uh, as they move through middle school and high school. Um, stay connected. So. It is so important to me that we together uh, stay connected, that you communicate, we communicate with you effectively. If we're not, please let us know. Um, but also for you to communicate with us, please reach out. Um, I love parents who, who want to reach out and talk to us um, and advocate for their students. Um, I, I really um, desire to connect with you and for our staff to connect with you. Um, and part of that is also through our parent portal. So if you don't know, we have a parent portal. You can, you can look at your students' grades and how they're doing uh, through that. Um, and if you need help with that, we will have uh, some support for you at parent conferences in here, uh, or you can contact us at the school. Um, and Ms. Lisa or Ms. Dan, we can help you out with that. Uh, they're great about that. Um, and we want you to be present. So attend parent and family involvement opportunities. Like we, we have several opportunities. I'm going to explain those here in a little bit. Um, but we want you to be involved, uh, to come. And if those times or the way we've scheduled them doesn't work for you, let us know. Um, let us know what would make it better. Uh, feedback is so important and we welcome that. Um, we ask that you would definitely attend parent meetings and conferences. So we're getting ready to set those up uh, the last week of October. Um, and so please, we want to work with you. We want to talk with you. We want to meet with you face to face. We want to be able to discuss your child and have that open communication is so important. Um, and just know the first line of communication is the teacher. So again, like that teacher uh, working with your child is, is so important for y'all to communicate and to talk. Um, also, I'm going to talk about attendance, just being at school. Um, being present, uh, and research will tell you this, that being present at school is vital to the development um, and that they need to be here. Um, and I know this year has been such a challenge as is last year. If your child has sniffles or if they, you know, have a cold, then, you know, we, we send you home and require a PCR test. Um, and just know that, uh, that we, we recognize and know that that is difficult. Um, but outside of those things, we, we need them to be here. Um, and if they miss more than 10% of school, it does affect their learning. And I know sometimes that's happening simply because of COVID. Um, and so we want to work with you. Uh, Mr. Moya is our quarantine liaison. Uh, currently, my child is quarantined right now. So I am in the same situation a lot of parents have found themselves in. Uh, but Mr. Moya is one of our, uh, he is 
there to, and he has been hired to reach out to you to communicate with you, as well as our teachers have been instructed that uh, to really communicate and reach out. Um, and if you are not getting that communication and your child has been quarantined and you've got questions or you uh, feel that we haven't connected with you, please let us know. Um, but he will be reaching out if your child is quarantined and just to let you know, uh, kind of to help support that learning while they are home. And trust me, I know that it is difficult. Um, but outside of COVID, like just building that healthy routine of getting up, going to school, um, that will be their life uh, for the next 12 years, uh, 13 years, and just building that routine of, of we get up in the mornings, we come to school, and we come to school on time. Um, and that just builds those habits uh, for high school, college, and eventually their work life. Um, so we also have a, a home family compact. And what that compact is, is it just, uh, you should have already received that or signed that or seen that. If you haven't, please let us know. Um, but that's just uh, the compact that just talks about how we can partner together to, to have high expectations for our students. Um, that we need your support at and from home uh, in doing so and the expectations we have uh, at school. Um, and so this compact highlights what the expectations are for me, uh, for the teachers, and for you as the parents uh, and the students. So we talked to them about that. Um, and so all of those things, those expectations are just to ensure that we have academic success because, again, uh, without you, we can't do it. Like that's that's just it. Without you... Uh, and that partnership, we 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 can do it um, as well as we could. Um, so we really desire to connect and engage with you. Um, so here are some ways uh, so far that we have uh, scheduled um, in terms of family engagement. So the next one coming up. So obviously, parent conferences are going to be October twenty fifth to twenty ninth, um, and then we've got a night at the library. It's going to be the first week in November. Um, it's going to be on Tuesday and Thursday night, um, and we will have uh, certain grade levels on Tuesday, certain grade levels on Thursday, but this will be a great time where your students are going to present a character from their, from their favorite books, and we'll have our book fair at that time. Uh, so that's a great time. I can't wait. We are going to, we want you to come. We want you to come in the building. Uh, masks will still be required, but uh, other than that, we want you there. Um, we're, we'll also be doing a science fair March 3rd and 4th. We have a STEM night, which is our science uh, science night, science and math night on February 10th. And we'll have an ELA night in April the 26th. Um, and then we do a book buffet kind of the last week of school. So those are some ways to get involved. But please don't wait for those. Um, we have a school improvement team and we meet monthly. You can find those dates on our website. Um, but we would love for you to be involved. We meet after school at 315 in our media center. Um, and we welcome all parent involvement and all stakeholders. Um, also, uh, we love volunteers. And I know volunteers were, have been limited because of COVID. Uh, but we are open to volunteers now. Um, so if you are interested in helping us out, or coming in and working with some students, I can always use people to come in and help students read. Uh, to do small groups, any any kind of volunteering you want to do. Um, you do have to, we do have to get a background check for that. So please uh, see the county website for volunteer information. You have to fill out an application and do a background check uh, to come in and volunteer. But once that's through and approved, uh, you're good to go. So we would love uh, to have you uh, volunteer. In addition, I know that uh, I think that Hill and Dale has struggled to, to create a PTO. Uh, but it is my goal um, the second half of this year to really get one started and get one going. So please reach out to me if you are interested um, in being a part of, we as a school cannot get better if we don't hear from parents. We want to give you a voice and we want to hear what you have to say and listen to what you hope for in the school that your students go to. Um, and so we really want, uh, I really want that input. We really want that input. Um, so please reach out. Um, so in terms of reaching out and in touch with us, this is our phone number. Please reach out is our number. Uh, you can email me at any time. You can call and set up a meeting with me at any time. Uh, during parent conferences, I'll be available. Um, my door is open. Uh, so this is my email uh, and also our phone number. Uh, 
Um, so I thank you so much for your time. I know this has been a long video, uh, but I appreciate your time and willingness uh, to take the time to do this. And uh, I hope to continue to connect uh, with y'all. And thank you so much for letting Hillendale serve your students. So go Huskies and Bradley out.